How do you go from building bombers so big they crashed on their first flight to dominating the skies with helicopters every nation wants? Imagine this, Italy's aviation story began with wild, impossible dreams. Nine-wing flying boats, barrel-shaped jets, and bombers that made even superpowers nervous. For decades, the world said, Italy's chasing giants it can't catch. The experts scoffed. Caproni's bombers are too ambitious. Italy's just a license shop. Augusta will never outdesign the Americans or Russians. But then, Italy stopped trying to outmuscle the giants and started outsmarting them. This is the story of how Italy's wildest failures became the DNA of a helicopter empire, and how Augusta, now Leonardo, became the superpower nobody saw coming. After digging through a century of Italian aviation, from Caproni's World War I bombers to Leonardo's modern rotorcraft, I found a transformation that will change how you see innovation. While everyone else measured success by size and speed, Italy learned to win by being different, not bigger. What you're about to see is how chasing the impossible taught Italy to build the helicopters the world actually needs. The story starts in 1908, when Gianni Caproni built Italy's first powered aircraft in a Milan workshop. By World War I, Caproni's heavy bombers, CA-32, CA-33, CA-36, were flying for Italy and France, making Italy a prime player in a world of superpower aviation. These bombers were massive for their time, with triple engines and crews of four. They dropped tons of bombs over the Alps and the Piave, and for a moment, Italy looked like it could outbuild the giants. But Caproni's ambition didn't stop at what worked. He dreamed of flying boats with nine wings and jets before jets even existed. What nobody realized was that these impossible projects would teach Italy lessons that would pay off a century later. After World War I, Caproni doubled down on audacity. The CA-60 Transaereo, a nine-wing, eight-engine flying boat, crashed on its second flight. The Stipa Caproni, a barrel-shaped ducted fan plane, was so draggy it barely flew, but it inspired future jet designs. The Caproni Campini N1, a motor jet built under political pressure, was slower than prop planes, but made headlines as the world's first public jet demonstration. Each failure was a moonshot, too ambitious for Italy's resources, but each one left a mark. The world saw only the crashes, not the seeds of future innovation. By 1950, Caproni's empire collapsed, but the DNA of daring and the lessons of failure would soon find a new home. In 1952, Augusta made a move that changed everything. Instead of chasing giants, they licensed the Bell 47 helicopter. Critics called them an assembly shop, but Augusta was learning, quietly, how to build, adapt, and improve. By the 1970s, Augusta launched the A-109, the first indigenous Italian helicopter, a fast, elegant twin that became a global bestseller. In 1983, the A-129 Mangusta became Europe's first attack helicopter integrating sensors and weapons before most of NATO. The EH-101, now AW-101, built with Westland, became a heavy naval and multi-role success, flying for navies from the UK to Japan. Augusta had stopped trying to outmuscle the giants and started outdesigning them in niches the big players ignored. The license shop was now setting the standard for what a modern helicopter could be. In the 2000s, Augusta merged with Westland, then became Leonardo Helicopters, a global force. The AW-139, AW-169, and AW-189 families shared cockpits, training, and support, creating a family advantage that won fleets worldwide. The AW-609 tilt rotor aimed for the first civil certification, blending helicopter flexibility with airplane speed. The AW-249, Italy's next-gen attack helicopter, flew in 2022, pushing the envelope again. Italy was no longer a licensee, it was a leader. From search and rescue to VIP transport, Leonardo's helicopters became the benchmark for reliability, safety, and innovation.
The world's air forces, coast guards, and offshore operators now depend on Italian helicopters. Not because they're the biggest, but because they're the smartest. The DNA of Caproni's daring now powers Leonardo's global success. The Caproni to Augusta story is more than a tale of machines. It's a lesson in learning from failure, adapting, and knowing when to stop chasing giants and start building your own path. Italy is now a helicopter superpower, peer to Airbus and Sikorsky, and the only nation to turn a century of impossible dreams into a family of aircraft the world relies on. The world's biggest air forces now train, fight, and save lives in Italian helicopters. The impossible bombers and failed moonshots weren't wasted. They were the tuition for a new kind of success. If this transformation story changed how you see innovation, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Your support helps me uncover more stories of how learning from failure can create global leadership. Do you think Italy's journey proves that chasing giants is less important than outsmarting them? Or is this just the beginning of a new era in aviation? Give me your take in the comments, because this debate about ambition versus strategy is just getting started. Remember, the next time someone says your dreams are impossible, they might be watching you build the future.